Good morning, dear listeners, and welcome to this brand new series, The Story of Yesterday. This is going to be the first episode, I hope, the first of many, so I'm super, super excited. Now, many of you may not know me. I am a young storyteller who cares for your personal and intellectual growth. I believe that everyone has their story, but we sometimes need to hear it from others to understand the best from it. I want to become the one who shares stories and these would provi- provoke your thoughts and allow you to grow personally and intellectually. Because all of this is brand new, I would like to present to you the structure, the structure of these podcasts. I will start with the story, then I will reflect how it represents something bigger And the final part would be that bigger picture, how to understand it and how to get the best from it. Now, I have a website. It's called thestoryofyesterday.com and you can find more content there, also these podcasts. And there will be a separate window where you can share your story by putting in some info and then um, typing in the story. I would be very grateful for you to share it because that's the only way that I can get to know you listeners and maybe one day I can show it on my podcasts. I hope you will enjoy this first episode and let's get right into the story. This is how I got arrested in Kenya. An important question to ask is how I even got there. And why did I went to Kenya? I'm a Catholic and a volunteer. And that means that I really wanted to become a missionary. For those who do not know who missionaries are, these are people that evangelize and help those who are in need. They go to these rural places, to these countries, the third world countries, and help the people who are actually a need that they live with them, they help them, they build houses, they do community work. And I wanted to do the same. I went to Kenya to preach the word of God and uh, help them. So I didn't have any bad um, meanings to going to Kenya. I didn't want to be a tourist. I just wanted to help. Uh, and it was even a big, bigger shock when these people that I helped turned their back on me in this case. But it was a rare case. So how it happened? We went to Kenya for a whole month. And the first week was kind of traveling these big cities because we were kind of tired of the airplane and we couldn't get into the northern part uh, from the beginning so we decided to go uh, on in these cities Mombasa and Nairobi Nairobi is the capital the biggest city of Kenya and Mombasa is a tourist city on the south um, by the sea the cities are not that different from Europe where i'm from because the influence of Western countries is quite big, actually. It was surprising. We one day wanted to go for a swim. We walked on the shore. Nothing, nothing unusual. We were just talking. Three girls were in front. We two boys, my friend and me, we were at the back just talking basic stuff, guy stuff, you know, nothing interesting. Suddenly, we heard a voice, a woman's voice. She was like, yeah, you two, you guys, you come here. (laughs) And we were like looking. On the left, there was nothing. On the right, there was the sea. There was no one around. Like, on the left, there were forests and, and rocks. We just couldn't see anyone. It was so, so difficult to even hear the voice but it was there it suddenly got even more aggressive telling us yo you two come here you must come here and we still couldn't see her then we were looking and looking and we saw a woman and a man inside the rocks (laughs) 
in a cave all, almost. Um, but we were like, okay, it's it's good. The the na- the locals were quite talkative, quite friendly. We just thought that they wanted to talk with us, and we went there. We didn't think what would happen next, but <laughs> we just wanted to talk. So we went there, and the woman was very friendly. She was saying, oh, yeah, so where are you from? Where are you staying? Why are you here? We even joked around, and suddenly, after a couple of minutes, she went completely serious. In a single moment, she was like, sit down, you are arrested. Then she pulled the gun AK-14 behind her back (laughs) and she put it like in front of her and she was like, okay, so now you sit down, you have to sit down. And the other guy, he, he pointed the gun to us and was also super serious. It was at this moment, I was like completely shocked. I couldn't know what was happening. I was just standing there. You must know that I'm from a country where guns are totally illegal and policemen aren't that serious, I guess. So seeing a gun in person was a complete shock for me and for the other guy too. We were like, uh, why? What is happening? Like, we must now sit down or what? And she got even more aggressive. And she was like, yes, now sit down. And she kind of forced us to sit down. We couldn't do it ourselves because we are in complete shock. And uh, yeah, so we sat down. And she started talking. Yeah, listen, guys, you broke the law. You have to go to prison until Friday. It was Tuesday. You have to pay 40,000 shillings each. That is around $400. And you will have to go to court. Then you will be banned from this country. And you have no entrance now. It was such a disaster in, in my mind. I was like, oh, no, what now? What if this actually happens? Oh, my God. Then she used these words. She said, yeah, look, either you do that or there is an easier way. And at that moment, I I knew (laughs) Kenya is very corrupt. And I knew that. So she suddenly talked, you know, kind of like very did you did you look at the film joker he he was similar to her because he was so two-faced on on one hand he was very aggressive just like her on the other hand whenever he wanted something he would be very polite you know yeah you can do that and so she used the other face she was like Yes, so there's an easier way you can give us money, you can donate, um, let's say, 20,000 shillings and you will be free. That is an easier way, yes. I'm not proud of what what I was thinking at the moment. I was so glad she, she said that because that was the best way I imagined for me to get out. I was just like, Yes. Okay, we will. We will. There is no need for us to go to prison. We'll just pay the money we had that was around 150 euros, so we had them with us, but not at the, the seashore, at the seaside. We called the girls because we didn't have our wallets and they uh, gave us the money so that we can go free. Uh, we paid them and they were very i mean they kind of wanted more later but we already um, went along the shore and didn't turn our backs now how why did that why did we even get arrested (laughs) you may be asking yourself 
I'm not sure either. What she said was, yeah, you didn't have your masks on. Matei, the other guy that was with me, he had his mask under his nose. I had it on my wrist because we were in nature and there was no one even like two kilometers around us. Except them, I guess. We didn't see them. Well, that's why we got arrested. But I think that they would find anything, anything to get us arrested. So it was inevitable. And one small detail, uh, we still don't know if they are actually police. They had their uniforms, different uniforms. One was wearing this blue shirt and the other one, he was wearing this greenish um, shirt. And they had no badges, they had no identif identification cards, nothing to tell that they were the police. So God knows what would happen if we didn't pay them. Well, um, then we walked down the shore. <laughs> we were still in shock. We couldn't speak normally. The girls, they were quite <laughs> impulsive, you know, like real women. They were stopped by this guy that was probably involved in everything. And they were very angry because he was following us, nonetheless. There wasn't much of a swim that we wanted to. So we turned and went to the hotel we talked. It was difficult to, to talk from the start, but we kind of resolved everything and we were again very happy uh, that night I mean you lose the money but it's important to keep the relationship in the group very good and so we did and we went to sleep and everything was good now when I reflected what had happened I stumbled upon the fact that I think this represented a sign of something bigger. We don't know these policemen, we never saw them again. But what I saw in their eyes was that they were desperate. They were so desperate that they lowered their values to do such thing. Because I believe they are good people just that they have to survive. The city is completely dependent on tourists. And if there are no tourists because of the pandemic, they cannot survive. You never know. Maybe she had some children to feed and she couldn't otherwise. And the man, maybe his own village is dependent on him and he just couldn't get the money. I'm not supporting the fact that they are arrest that they arrested us but we will never know why they are so desperate that they had to do such things. I really feel sorry for them. There is no other way than to do illegal things to survive. It's a sign of, as I said, a bigger picture in Kenya. It's completely corrupt, the country. It's completely corrupt. The police are corrupt. The doctors are corrupt. Teachers are corrupt. The government seems to make us believe that all these things, the, the school system is free, the medical system is free, but that's only on paper. What I have noticed is that everything you must pay for. And you cannot survive if you do not get paid yourself. And that is why we have to help these people. Whenever I told this story to people here in Europe or in these developed countries, they had their own opinion about it and their own way of thinking what would happen if that would happen to them. Most of them said, yeah, ha, you did such a bad thing. You should not have paid. 
you these people are are so bad they deserve prison and everything but we cannot judge with our with our eyes because our cultures they're completely different we have different communities different values and we have to be careful because our values enforcing our values in their country is what destroyed them it really did whenever i was helping with these people um i noticed that what had actually made them bad is is tourism it actually did because whenever we served on the north uh, it's a part of kenya that is not developed that is the the poorest and there is no tourism but people were so grateful people were people people were very giving and welcoming they just wanted us to have a good time they did not want or most of them did not want our money they just wanted to live their their lives and that's it they implemented us into their normal day and they were good but these people that were influenced by tourism kind of lusted our um position and they were they were destroyed by it so as i mentioned these people that have arrested us or people that are in need that are the poorest still have their values their communities and their cultures we just have to embrace that they, that we are different this is the beautiful part of for example mission trips we think that they need to be like us but whenever you finish with the work you realize that we are the ones that learn from them not only that they learn from us but it's both sided and we have to embrace the differences because they no, they cannot survive in our community because we are so selfish and we wouldn't help others most of developed countries and we would hardly survive in, in their culture what we have to do is live side by side and that is the only way to make this world a better place what i learned from living with these people for a month was that my help um for example giving them money or mm, making things for them was not good help i learned that the best thing that i could do is give them an example of a young man who has to work his butt off to actually have the money and travel here to help them they imagined that even us europeans get money from our for example parents or grandmas or whatever to actually travel here they think that we live in a perfect world but that is not the case for example they might not think that their country is very good but some things in their country are perfect you know how many people would die for the the kind of peace that they have they can live from day by day what is not possible in our world they have their um, strengths and weaknesses and so do we 
But what we have to understand is that we can actually have our worlds collide and make the best from it. Because if we live with our own weaknesses, the weaknesses will just get worse. We can implement each other and make them, for example, not so influential. That is what I learned from this story and I wish that you can learn some new things from this story. Thank you for your time. I think that 20 minutes of podcast is going to be good enough for the first episode. Now I welcome you or I encourage you to hit that subscribe button, that follow button and be ready for the next story because next week we are going to hear about a woman who was one feet away from death. But that one feet changed her life completely and now she is the best woman I know. Once again, thank you for listening. I forgot one thing. Go check the story of yesterday.com where you can share your story and one day become a part of this podcast. Have a good one and goodbye.